All right. <clears throat> Snack consumed. Water gotten. Ooh. Rolled over something. There we go. Perfect. All right. Look, it's only a mistake if I admit it's a mistake. Right? Right. Sure. That's how it works, right? Okay. I just, in all serious, it probably means that my evening stream tomorrow, I will cancel my evening stream. Like, I, I only do really long streaming periods like this once a week, so I'll probably just move tomorrow's. I mean, it's a house flipper stream. I might do it anyway, depending on how I feel. I could wake up tomorrow and have no voice from all of the reading, but <laughs> I need to do a voiced games next or a game with very little reading and a lot of stabbing things. <laughs> do garden story. That's what we'll do next. All right. Joe Dark. That's a name I'll not soon forget. We trailed him for half a year. Oh, the pressure. Still, I don't think I was ever more alive than I was then. Those days were steamier than a bowl of hot gravy. I love gravy, but also gross. Poor old Jake Marshall, though. Must have been going through hell. You mean because of his brother's death? They were close, those two. After Neil died, something took over Jake. He became obsessed. Seeing Jake like that made her all the more desperate. Her? Lana Sky. My sister? The best of the best were put on that SL9 case. Of course they were led by that legendary duo. Lana and Chief Gant. That legendary pair was the reason we were able to keep up our investigation. That's why we were so shocked over how it turned out. You mean, with the forging of the evidence? Don't get me wrong, Joe Dark got he what he deserved. Still, it was obvious the evidence produced in court was being manipulated. Items our team never found would suddenly appear, while other items were kept secret. And you don't have proof anything illegal was done. I'm proof enough of what happened. After that case, all of us say Goodman were relieved of our duties. Most without even so much as an explanation. Then Lana Sky transferred to the prosecutor's office and became chief prosecutor. Lana always wanted to be a prosecutor. Nothing's quite as simple as it appears. Huh? Lana Sky was merely being used as a pawn. That's my take on the matter. My take as well. Uh, Chief Gant's a problem. She was being used? Damon Gant and Lana Sky. Gant led the investigation while with Lana second in command. They were the best. They solved all kinds of cases together, didn't they? Damon Gant's magnetism in particular was almost unreal. His magnetism? By that, I mean his ability to, to, to attract evidence. He'd produced the most incredible evidence in the cases he handled. Incredible evidence? You mean... Oh, yes. There were rumors about him even back then. No one dared confront him, though. I take it she's talking about forged evidence. Back then, everyone looked up to Lana. All the detectives wanted to be like her. Really? Oh, yes. Myself included. I was a fool, really. She hated anything crooked and always watched out for the other detectives. That's why she was so concerned for Jake. Mr. Marshall. When Jake's brother was murdered, she felt as if she had lost her own brother. If it wasn't for her, I don't think Jake would have ever recovered from his shock. That's what makes it all the more infuriating. Miss Starr. That's why I'll never be able to forgive her. Why did she have to turn so cold after that? Dot, dot, dot. Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office two years ago, didn't she? Yes, thanks to Chief Gant's powerful influence. Chief. That's right. 
Having solved the SL9 case, his position was as bleh, his position as chief was secured. Blah, 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 blah. There was only one thing left for him to control, and then no one could stand in his way. The prosecutor's office. What? You mean, that's why Lana was transferred? If he could control the chief prosecutor, he could control the prosecutor's office. That must have been his goal all along. But, but how did he control Lana? I don't know, but one thing's for sure. Ever since that case ended, she's never been the same. It's only logical to conclude. There must have been a reason for her change. So, thought... What if she actually was trying to save Emma and got in the middle of the fighting and accidentally stabbed the prosecutor herself? What if Lana accidentally stabbed Neil? At last, I'm finally getting close to the bottom of this ugly mess. Thank you, Miss Star. You listen to me, rookie. It takes more than just ingredients to create fine cuisine. I hope you turn out to be a better chef than I've been. Alright, we're gonna go and we're gonna show Gumshoe why she's trying to take the fall, why she changed to try to keep people away from her, because she tried to keep everybody away from her. Either that or something else happened, like Gant stabbed him or something, and... Basically, she's just been enthralled this whole time. It's hard. It's really hard to say. Where'd you go, Gumshoe? I got something to show you. Oh, you're back. You're still here? I gotta make 150 copies of these files. Brewing coffee, copying files. I've turned into a regular DJ. You're a DJ as well? If I'm not mistaken, I think he means... Desk jockey. Oh, that DJ. I gotta admire your persistency, but my answer's still no. I'm not letting you in the chief's office, period. You'd be my neck on the line. That office is the last crime scene in the SL9 incident. I have to take a look in there. There's gotta be something we can do to make the detective change his mind. Oh, there totally is. Da 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 da. Edgeworth's discarded letter of resignation. He's serious. What's this crumpled up piece of paper? <laughs> no way! Mr. Edgeworth can't be serious! Is he even... Is he ever not serious? I can't believe they pushed him this far. Mr. Edgeworth really feels responsible. When I first met him, I thought he was as cold as ice too. But I know different now. He trusted us detectives to provide him with sound evidence. But we just... We betrayed him. Detective. Dot, dot, dot. That's it. I've made up my mind. But... Here, take my ID card. We can't do that. If someone found out, they wouldn't let you off the hook with another lost item report. Look at me. It's no secret I'm already out of the loop. After all, I'm friends with Mr. Edgeworth. Depending on how this case turns out, I may already be as good as terminated. What? So at least let me do this. For Mr. Edgeworth's sake. All right, detective. Thank you. No, Gumshoe sacrificing himself. Gumshoe's ID tucked swiftly into pocket. All right. To the chief's office. So we can hose it down with luminol. Here goes, Mr. Wright. We're in! If anyone finds us now... Detective Gumshoe's a goner. If that happens, I'm counting on you to bail me out. Uh, uh. I think she just slapped him again. Sorry, I thought you were a ghost. I didn't even know you could slap a ghost. Ah, Detective Gumshoe! What are you doing sneaking up on us like that? Uh, I wasn't sneaking. I was just worried something might go wrong. 
So I came too. If you're here, then what's the point of giving us your ID card? Gumshoe's ID. Crushed and rendered unusable in pocket. Hey, don't do that to my card. I hardly ever get a chance to come in here. So I figured I'd have a look around myself. Besides, we're all in this together now. You really do want to get fired, don't you? Not if we're lucky. Now come on, let's see what we can find out. I've got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, I know. I have a really bad feeling about all of this. This is safe, isn't it? Safe. That word is ripe with intrigue. Uh, okay, if you say so. It looks like a code needs to be entered in this panel to open it. We can dust it for fingerprints and figure out what the code is. Seven digit number. I think I might just know what it is. Don't touch it yet. I better wait until I find something more definite. We're going to wait. Seven digit number. Didn't we see one of those somewhere? How about we try entering my birth date? No. All right. These vases are fine. It's a big desk. Oh, look at the size of Chief Gant's desk. Thinking of that, when we were here earlier. Oh, it's you two. Chief Gant. He put that paper he was reading in his desk. Oh, it's the evidence list. I wonder what he was reading. This looks like a list of evidence. A list of evidence? In most cases, the list runs twice as long as this, though. Hey, look at the case name. Huh? The SL9 incident. I wonder what this is doing here. Hold on, detective. What did you just say? I said, I wonder what... No, about evidence lists. Normally, they're twice as long? That's right. I guess there wasn't a lot of evidence. A half-sized list of evidence. This list of evidence seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. What would the other half of the list be doing here? I knew it! The chief must be hiding something about that case! It would appear so. Evidence list! Added to the court record. List of evidence in the SL9 incident was ripped in half, so this part is all I've got. Da 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 da! Oh, we are almost like four pages into the fourth page. What do we got here? Rotate. This is the picture. This is the picture that Emma drew. This is the picture Emma drew. I wonder what this is. It looks like someone drew some kind of sketch here. What is it? Did you find something? I can't make it out. I'd better keep quiet about it for now. Huh? Oh. No, it's nothing. Why are your eyes moving around like that, Mr. Wright? I better not forget about this picture. I will not forget about this picture. Trust me. If I zoom in, can I read it? Let me read it. Fine. Whatever. Alright. Um. This is the real deal, isn't it? This armor and these weapons? Sure is, pal. The chief doesn't care for imitations. First the pipe organ, now this armor. Do you know how many taxpayer dollars must have gone into this room? What? You mean we're paying for this? That's it. I'm not paying one cent of my taxes. You don't have any taxes to pay. Shh, be careful what you say. Who knows? Chief may be hiding in this armor as we speak. I don't think he'd fit in there. Even if he did, he'd never be able to get back out. Cut it out. You guys don't know how scary that guy can be. I mean, I am not afraid. The chief's organ sure is a sight to behold. Occasionally, we hear him playing it from the criminal affairs department. That's on the second floor, and this is the 15th floor of an entirely different building. When a detective screws up, the chief calls him to his office and makes them listen to the organ for hours. What's so bad about that? Music soothes the soul. After that, the detective can't hear anything for days except the ringing in their ears. So it's an instrument of punishment. Literally. But aren't the chief's ears affected? He never listens to anyone anyway. That's beside the point. Slide. Must be his secretary's desk. This was Lana's desk. Sure is tidy. Lana's always been a meticulous cleaner. 
There's not even any dust on it. Looks like someone's still keeping it clean. Does Lana ever come back here? No. Chief Gant must still keep it clean in memory of their partnership. They were the stuff legends are made of. Does he keep it clean in memory of her or in memory of the crime? These shelves are mostly empty. Lana must have cleaned them out when she transferred over to the prosecutor's office. There's a small picture frame on the left shelf. Wee! This is when Lana and I went to that theme park. That's sad. Why didn't she take it with her? rip rooney Look at that giant window. Makes you want to crash through and jump it outside. Uh, this is the fifth floor. Fifteenth floor. I know, I was just saying. Saying what? Ever since making detective, I've always dreamed about doing something like that. Note to self. Detective Gumshoe has a lot of dreams. So long as he doesn't go crashing through that window when he gets fired. Don't say that! Yikes, right? Don't say that. This was, this was taken on that day two years ago. The day Joe Dark ran out of the questioning room and tried to kill Emma. After receiving his award trophy, Mr. Marshall took a picture here, then went along with Chief Grant to question Dark. I bet he never knew he'd be dead just a few hours later. Gee, you think? Alright, I think I got all the things we have investigated. Oh, we can click on the desk again? But I already stole the stuff out of the desk. Wow, look at the size of the desk. We found this inside the drawer. List of evidence. Mr. Edgeworth had the other half of that list. What would this list be doing here? We better look a little more into this list. I mean, I did. Alright. So, to save myself, you can see pretty far from 15 stories up. If you were to drop that suit of armor from here. At first, the chief wanted to use stained glass for this window. Really? Why didn't he? They say he changed his mind because he wouldn't be able to see the view. Oh, stained glass or not, it's a huge window. All right, let's get into this safe here. Safe. Oh, I know it's an altar. Otter's just about done with my garbage. All right. Seven-digit number, input number. Do you know what it is? I have a hunch. Oh, I know. You want to try my birthday? It's... I have a better idea. Here goes nothing. That's the kind of code an idiot puts on his luggage. Bingo. What number did you enter? Whose birthday was that, pal? 777. Seven. Seven, seven. The final ID card number on that record. What? The number of the mysterious executive officer who entered the room that day. You mean... Seven, 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 seven? I think you're one seven shy this time. This can only mean one thing. That's Chief Grant ID number. Say, anyone care to look inside? I mean... Do we need to talk to him? Yeah, I mean, I guess we could talk to him real quick. That desk on the other side of the room, was that your sister's? Yes, that's where I was waiting for Lana on that day two years ago. Is anyone using it now? No, sir. This is the entire, this is entirely Chief Gant's office now. He practices a strict policy of preserving the crime scene. It's a strange reason to leave it there. He leaves it as a warning to everyone else. He wants us to always be alert. He told us, since, he told us so himself at our New Year's party. Of course, he was pretty intoxicated at the time. I see. So, ever since Lana left, no one touches that desk? No one except Chief Gant and the cleaning lady who's in here each morning. Still, two years have passed since that incident. There can't possibly be any clues remaining. I mean, we're gonna get the luminol out in a minute. Can I ask you something? Sure. You only came here to look around, right? Because it's one of the SL9 crime scenes. I mean, that's your only reason for coming here, isn't it? Why do you ask? You don't think. Nah, you wouldn't be. No. No, there's no way. Never mind. Don't worry about it. 
Okay. Now then, let's look around a bit more. Hey, hold on. Not so fast, buddy. Huh? What is it? When someone tells you don't worry about it, it's supposed to start bothering you, pal. You don't just let it go at that. Sorry. Guy's starting to get on my nerves. Okay, so what's bothering you? You two don't think Chief Gant might be a suspect, do you? What? He's right, Mr. Wright. What do we think of him? Chief Gant. So it's finally come to this. What do I think of him? Perhaps it's best I don't divulge my feelings. Yet. There you go, ignoring me again. Alright, so I want to hit examine. Actually, slide. We want court record. Where's that luminol? Spray! <laughs> I knew it. Whoa! This area must have been covered in blood. Is this from that incident? It must be. Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. Two years have passed, so the reaction's kind of dull. So a murder really did take place here. I'm just kind of spritzing, making sure there's... Nothing that we're missing in the luminol department. Okay. Let's see if we can do anything with the fingerprint stuff. Oh, we can just like examine it like that. All right. All right. In the safe. Is there any money in there? How much money does he have staffed away? Look, it's a... A, a shard from a broken cup. It somehow looks familiar. Where have I seen this before? It's the broken pot piece. There's something else in here, too. What's this? Looks like a piece of leather cloth. It's got fingerprints on it. This is a handprint, isn't it? Hey, I saw someone wearing a shirt like that once. You think the chief made up the design? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, well, it was just a thought. Is that it? This is all that was in the safe? Apparently so. It's empty now. Close the safe. We do not need to show that we've a piece of cloth with a handprint on it and a broken shard from a cup. They look like pieces of evidence. Yeah, but unless you can prove they have something to do with this case, I'm afraid I can't just let you take them. After all, it's my neck on the line here. Great. Now I have to prove their relevancy to get them. How are these two related to the DL9 incident? Or SL9 incident? Come on! There's gotta be something we can show to the detective? I mean... Alright, court record. We will show... Alright. Present. Present this. Detective Gumshoe. Could you have another look at the shark? I remember when the three of us put that back together. Ah, those were the days. It's kind of early to be nostalgic. Wasn't the shark a piece of evidence from that case? That's right. One of the shards had an SL9 incident sticker on it. Doesn't this ring any bells? You know, that fragment we just found? You mean this one that was in the safe? Yes, that one that was in the safe. Now that you mention it, ringing a lot of bells. Let's see if it fits. Assemble fragments. Here, let me see that shard. I'll take a crack at this. Go ahead, Bell. Show us what a rookie can do. Sir Wright, here's some glue. If I can piece this together again, it'll prove Chief Gant was knowingly hiding evidence. Here goes. I mean, it's one piece. We can totally figure this out.
แปะเอาล่ะโอ้ยูอินเดอะโคตมีเซอร์เ
Drop off your ID on the way out. You won't be needing it anymore. But, sir... Now get out! Y yes sir! We'll be on our way too then. Wait. You. The one without the spiky hair. Don't go yet. M me sir? I'd like a word with you. But, but sir, I'm not a licensed scientific investigator yet. You with the spiky hair, you're free to go. M Mr. Wright! I don't want to leave her there. Look, pal, if I told you once, I told you a thousand times. The chief's office is off limits. But no, you just had to go sneaking in there like that, didn't you? Thought you said you didn't care anymore if you were fired. Yeah, but if I knew it'd be like this, I never would have said it. Now that I've seen the evidence Chief Gant was hiding in his office, I think I'm finally starting to get the picture. Why has she kept eerily silent about it all this time? Anyway, you listen to me. I'm gonna try to smooth things over with the chief again. Later, pal. Emma stabbed him in self-defense? After that, I heard from Emma. She said the police wanted to ask her some questions. So she'll be busy for the rest of the day. I'm gonna go and try to get her sister to tell me something. I see. So the chief asked Emma to come in for questioning. It's no use thinking about it. Tomorrow's the final day in court. I'm committed to doing everything I can to defend you, which is why I'm here. But I've already told you all I can. What you've told me over these past couple of days is absolutely nothing. Not a single useful thing. Really? I believe I did mention something quite important. Something I told you right at the beginning. I said that I was the one who stabbed Detective Goodman. You know, I think I've finally figured it out. I know who it is that's lurking behind your words. Dot dot dot. Mia did a good job mentoring you. I'm rather jealous. It seems Edgeworth was right. Edgeworth? Once you're convinced you know something, no one can persuade you otherwise. Thick-headed is the term he used, I believe. Now's my chance to get her to tell me the rest of the story. Tell me the rest of the story! I have to admit, I was more than a little perplexed at first. You insisted you did it, yet there was no incriminating evidence. That's when it hit me. It's not that you're unwilling to tell the truth. It's that you're incapable of doing so because of a certain individual. What an intriguing notion. A certain individual you say so you think I'm protecting this person protecting no I think afraid of is more like it if I'm not mistaken the person in question may have persuaded you to silence for argument's sake mr. Wright who may I ask is this person you're speaking of the one I am supposedly so frightened of what is this person's name uh, it's this guy Well, Miss Sky. Dot dot dot. Mr. Wright, you are addressing the Chief Prosecutor. Do not forget your place. I take it she's still not ready to spill the beans. My apologies. Could you please tell me a bit more about what you think you know? We were partners until two years ago. I respected him as a detective. Assuming he is respectable, then tell me something. Why would he try to hide his crimes? His crimes? Both you and Edgeworth will be brought before a board of inquiry for what you did. Specifically, hiding and forging evidence. Of course, these are serious offenses. Why is it, though, that Chief Gant's name was never mentioned? Chief Gant? Edgeworth didn't know the truth behind the forgery. The only party who could have possibly tampered with the evidence was me. I had access because I was second in command of that ex investigation. Yes, you, but also one other, Damon Gant. If you intend to accuse Chief Gant, you'll need more than just words. Show me proof that Chief Gant falsified evidence in that case. La, la, 
la 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 You want proof of the chief's wrongdoings? Here it is. That evidence proves someone is doing something wrong, all right. But it's not the chief. Well, who would that be? Why, you, of course. Me? Yes. You seriously believe what you're saying, don't you? Now that's scary. I, uh... You seem to have the makings of a criminal in you, what with all your fallacious accusations. Care to spin tonight in the cell next to mine? If you ask me, you're the scary one. Alright, so that was the wrong one. That's fine. We'll, uh, we'll pull the, uh, we'll do the, uh, the, the, what the hell. Falsified evidence. Maybe the jar? I just found this in a safe in the chief's office. This jar piece and this piece of cloth. Do you know what these are? They're pieces of evidence from the SL9 incident. I... The person concealing evidence was none other than Chief Gant himself. Now tell me, why are you taking all the blame for him? Oh. Touché, Mr. Wright. It's as you surmised. I cannot disobey the Chief's orders. Even if it means being found guilty for murder. Why not? Come now, Mr. Wright. You can't possibly expect me to be able to tell you that. Three days ago, I had no choice but to cooperate in the murder of Detective Goodman. Or perhaps I should say, follow orders. Yes, that's more accurate than cooperate. Although I can't tell you the details, I can say that I was given an order that day. I need you to dispose of Bruce Goodman's body. You'll find it inside the trunk of Miles Edgeworth's car. Yeah, all right. Just as I suspected. Despite what everyone believes, you were not the one who murdered Detective Goodman. Correct. I was trying to take the body out of Edgeworth's car. The trunk's lock was broken, and I discovered that murder weapon while inspecting the body. The murder weapon? You mean Edgeworth's knife? No. When I found the body, this was the knife stuck in it. The knife from the SL9 incident, serial killer Joe Dark's knife. I couldn't just leave that knife in him, so I took it out and stabbed him with another knife. That would be Edgeworth's knife. That's right. Even though he was already dead, my hands were shaking at the thought of stabbing him. That's why I ended up cutting my hand. And that is the reason for the bandage on your right hand. Yes. Seems I got blood on the victim's shoes as well. And then... She saw me just as I plunged the knife in. The star, huh? Why did you need to hide Dark's knife so badly? It took a lot of work to finally close the Dark case two years ago. It was over with. I didn't ever want it to be opened again. My intent was to prevent that, by whatever means possible. So, you hid Dark's knife? The weapon used to stab the detective was evidence in the Joe Dark case. If word got out, which it would, the reporters would have a field day with that. So you wrapped the knife in your scarf and hid it. In Edgeworth's exhaust pipe. Right. Then I called my sister to tell her what happened and to ask her to hide the knife that was inside my muffler. You asked, Emma? I didn't want anyone on the force to know about this. That would explain why Emma is so confident. About Lana's innocence. Speaking of phone calls, I had a bad feeling about one of them that day. A bad feeling? The truth is, after I received those orders from Chief Gant, the first thing I did was make a phone call. A phone call to Patrolman Jake Marshall. To Marshall? Why on earth would you call him? The lead investigator for the SL9 incident had been murdered. I wanted that fact to be kept hidden, and I needed help. He was the only other person I could trust. Or at least, I thought I could trust him at the time. However, it seems that after I spoke to him, he went off on an escapade of his own. Oh, you mean... Not wanting the case to die, he decided to take things into his own hands. 
he disguised himself as Detective Goodman and tried to steal the evidence. He had already stolen the ID card, but it seems he still hadn't made up his mind to break into the evidence room. After my phone call, any remaining doubts he had must have disappeared. So your phone call caused the incident in the evidence room? I'm afraid that's all I can tell you. But Lana... You've earned my respect, Mr. Wright, both as a defense attorney and as an investigator. Now please, don't pursue this any further in court tomorrow. Tomorrow's trial. There's only one way to drive off Lana's demons. I've got to get to the bottom of everything. Detective Goodman's real murderer. And what went down in the chief's office two years ago. Alright. We're going into the trial. This should be it. Oh. Oh. Ugh. All right. Look, I am very persistent. I refuse to give up. All right. Look, we're close. I feel it. I feel it in my bones. My bones that aren't hurting from me sitting in this chair for like nine hours. All right. Uh, 947. We are in defendant lobby number two. This is the defendant lobby, all right. But there's no defendant. I've been trying to reach Lana all morning. Where could she be? And where's Emma, for that matter? It almost seems as if... Something's been happening behind the scenes. Edgeworth! Knowing you, you've already figured it out. Who the owner of the 77777777 ID number is, that is. Well, I have a pretty strong hunch... Looks like I'm not the only one who's figured it out. You know, the only reason this trial didn't reach a ver verdict yesterday is because there was still room for doubt regarding this ID record. If that number does belong to whom you suspect, then no doubt will remain. After all, he hasn't been officially charged with anything. True. Not yet. In any event, once all doubt has been removed from that list, I can call for a ruling. Five minutes right, and Chief Prosecutor Sky will be found guilty. But she didn't do it. I figured you'd say as much. That's why I came here, to hear what you have to say. This is the first time he's ever done something like this. Lana's hiding something, and the only way we'll ever know the truth is to draw it out of her. The truth? Everything goes back to the SL9 incident. Don't be stupid. Today's the last day of the trial. We don't have time to reminisce about the past. That depends on you. If she's found guilty, you'll lose your only chance to find out what really happened. I'll think about it. See you in court, right? This is it. If I'm ever going to find out what Chief Gan has on her, it's now. Also, I saw that it said trial former, so that means this is a two-part trial, just like the other ones were. It's all right. It's okay. We've got a lot of evidence to go through, and we know how to save in the middle of it so that we don't have to backtrack at all. That one, that one trial where I had to keep backtracking through the whole thing. Oh, my God. We're in courtroom number nine. It's 10 a.m. Let's do it. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Skye. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Normally, this is when the prosecution puts forth its opening statement. Question mark. But before that, the police chief has a proposal to make. Chief Gant. Morning, folks! How's everyone doing? Hey, uh, you been back to the pool yet? No, I've been drowning enough as it is in my work. Oh, that's a good one. Don't think I can top that. If you don't mind me asking, Chief, exactly what is this proposal of yours? Uh, 
Lana, that is to say, the defendant, has asked me if she could speak directly to the court. She wants to do what? Having heard what she intends to say, I feel she should be granted her request. In the end, it should save everyone a lot of time and trouble. Not if I uh, cross-examine her and just rip her testimony to pieces. As I will do. What's this all about, defendant? I'd just like to make one simple request, and then I'll be finished. Well then, what's your request? Your Honor, I'd like you to put an immediate end to this trial. Huh? I confess to all charges against me. On February 21st of this year, I murdered Detective Bruce Goodman in the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. No, Lana! You can't! Your Honor, the defendant's claim does not change the defense's plea. In that case, Mr. Wright, I no longer require your services. But, Lana! Your Honor, I hereby forfeit my right to an attorney. The prosecution may lack direct evidence against me, but it has sufficiently proven in its case through testimony and circumstantial evidence. I would like you to render your verdict now, if you please. Hmm. Well, the defendant certainly has the right to self-representation. Her request is legally valid, although this is an unprecedented situation. Indeed, it appears there's no further need to continue this trial. Even if Mr. Wright may feel otherwise. This can't be happening. It appears the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant. Wait, is it Edgeworth that'll stop at this time? Come on, Edgeworth. Do it. Yeah, there we go. One moment, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution has not yet proven the defendant guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Any ruling at this stage would certainly be premature. Come now, Worthy. I understand this is a difficult time for you, but why don't you just be a good little boy and keep your mouth shut, hmm? Hmm. I don't think I care for your tone, Chief Gant. What? Creating another fabrication to cover up your past mistakes. Sorry, but I'm no longer the naive little boy you would have me be. Oh, spicy. With this sudden confession from the defendant, it's obvious to me some kind of deal was struck behind the scenes. Some kind of deal, hmm? Not everyone operates as you do, Worthy. Dot, dot, dot. Hmm. I thought so. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to change its first witness. Oh? To whom? As its first witness, the prosecution would like to call Miss Emma Skye. I request the court hears her testimony. <clears throat> Mr. Edgeworth, I'm executing my exercising my right to self-representation. I don't think we need to continue. I don't care what you think, Miss Skye. <laughs> the exposure of truth sometimes results in tragedy. However, no matter how tragic the truth may be, it would be an even greater tragedy to avert one's eyes from it. That's one way to make Phoenix lose, right? Just completely t just toss me to the curb? Yeah. Very well. The court shall grant the prosecution's request. That's okay with you, right, Chief Gant? Worthy. You'll live to regret this. Mark my words. Miss Emma Skye, please take the stand. Looks like Edgeworth has decided to take the horse by the reins. Now I have to pick Emma's testimony apart? That feels rude. Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Um, m my name is Emma. Emma Sky. My occupation? He was already- I mean, yeah, no, he was already gonna turn in his res resignation later. Like, he's done. Everybody's done. Gumshoe's done. Edgeworth's done. We're all done. We're all done. That's it. I'm Lana's little sister. And I want to be an scientific investigator. Two years ago, you encountered the serial killer Joe Dark of the Joe Dark killings. Is this correct? Yes. I'm trying my hardest to forget about that, though. I'm sorry. 
But I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to recall those events one more time. Mr. Edwards, please remember this trial concerns the murder of Detective Goodman. Is an incident that was resolved two years ago really all that relevant? Yes, it most certainly is. Uh, dot, dot, dot. Well, okay then. He sure gave in fast. Now, please testify about what happened to you two years ago. The trip to yesteryear has finally begun. It's bound to lead to the truth behind this trial. I'm ready. I'm gonna get it, and I'm kind of tired because, you know, I've been streaming for a million years, but as we get into this, I'm just gonna get more and more animated, and then I'll be full of adrenaline when I finish the stream. It's gonna be terrible. I was waiting in my sister's office that day. A man came running in and took me hostage. Neil Marshall rescued me, but I'll never forget what I saw in that incident. The man raised up his knife and and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. But you didn't see that. It's a good thing you weren't harmed. I passed out. I don't remember much. That's understandable. However, please tell me, Mr. Edgeworth, what does this testimony have to do with Detective Goodman's murder? That will soon become apparent, Your Honor. You've got to admire him for his courage, considering he has no evidence. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Oh, no. No, Emma! Okay. I feel bad. Feels bad, man. Oh, feels bad. I was waiting in my sister's office that day. Two years ago, the defendant was a detective at the police department, correct? Yes. She was second in command under then-Deputy Chief of Police Gant. My sister, she was the best detective ever. Yes, I remember. Deputy Chief Gant and Miss Guy used to be quite the pair. I believe they shared the same office. That's right. I'd always sit at my sister's desk and dream about playing that organ. I wanted to play it that day, too. The police department and the prosecutor's office held a ceremony that day. Lana promised to take me to dinner after she finished her work. A man came running in and took me hostage. <clears throat> a man? Yes, Joe Dark. He was a... serial killer. Joe Dark was brought in for questioning on the day of that ceremony. We were desperate to get anything on him that would lead to an arrest. When he saw his chance, he fled the room, right? Upon fleeing the room, Dark proceeded to take the elevator. He must have been in a panic because the elevator was going up. Then he ran into Sky and Grant's office. So that doesn't make any sense, right? Let's just make sure we're clear that it doesn't make any sense that he got into the elevator and instead of fleeing, he went up. Like, that is a deliberate action. There was a lot of noise coming from outside, so I opened up the door to have a look. That's when I saw him. Neil Marshall rescued me. What was the prosecutor doing there? That day, there were two people present during Dark's questioning. Deputy Chief Damon Gant and Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Almost forgot about Gant. And that's the point. Nobody's talking- Where was Gant? Marshall came running into the office after Dark. And where was Gant? Did he just sit in the investigation room? Neil Marshall had just received the King Neil Marshall had just received the King of Prosecutors Award. And I say earlier in the yesteryears of this trial, she said he looked like he was running away from something. That is exactly what he looked like. Yes. And I think that is going to be very important. Young and dedicated, he went straight to the questioning room after the ceremony. I assume that would also be why he was the first to run in after dark. When dark grabbed me, I I thought I was as good as dead. And that's when Prosecutor Marshall came running in. I... I don't clearly remember what happened then, but... I'll never forget what I saw in that instant. Can you tell us about that? Mr. Marshall jumped on dark. Just then, the lights went out. The lights? It was just about this time of year. 
There was a terrible storm going on, and lightning struck nearby. So the electricity went out. Wait a minute. If it was pitch bl dark in that room, you shouldn't have been able to see anything, right? Right, but just then lightning flashed again outside. That sudden flash left an unforgettable image of the scene in my mind. I see. I told the detective about what I saw then. The detective? Yes, Detective Goodman. He was in charge of the case. Detective Bruce Goodman. The victim. Hear more. So you spoke with Detective Goodman about this two years ago. Yes, that's what's so scary about this trial. And you told Detective Goodman about what you saw? Yes, but at the time, the words just wouldn't come out. That's why I drew a picture. A picture? Yes, I think she mentioned that before. Well, Mr. Wright, have you heard enough? Ask about the picture. This picture the witness drew. I believe it has a very important meaning. But the list of evidence I was given two years ago didn't contain a picture. Witness, would you mind if we added the statement to your testimony? Y yes your honor I drew a picture of that scene once, but it seems to have been lost. Okay, we're gonna press. Like, but that's that's where we're gonna do it. You drew a picture of the scene you witnessed, right? Yes, I wanted to do everything I could to help the investigation. I can still see it now, whenever I close my eyes. That's strange. I took over the case after Prosecutor Marshall died, yet I never received any picture. Perhaps the witness is mistaken. But I did draw it, I swear. I'm not just imagining it. This picture that Emma drew, that reminds me. I guess I should check the evidence again. No, I shouldn't. I know where it is. Well, anyway, let's continue. The scene that imprinted an image in your mind, can you please describe it to us? The man... The man raised up his knife and, and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. Except that Marshall was stabbed in the back. That's, uh, that's autopsy. Marshall was stabbed in the back. That must have been a real shock. Even now, when I close my eyes, I can still see it just as clearly. Tell us. What were you doing at that moment? I believe you testified that Joe Dark was holding you hostage. When lightning struck and the lights went out. Mr. Marshall jumped on Dark, I was thrown aside, and the two began wrestling each other. Hmm. I'm pretty sure I was watching them. Emma doesn't have any reason to lie. But Lana sure does. I need to get Emma to tell me as much about this as she can. Alright, so. Now. There's two problems here. We have the picture, but I don't think that's it. I think that it's... I think it's the I think it's the autopsy. I think that's what we're that's what we're at here. Because we don't have a contradiction for the picture, but we have a contradiction in this autopsy. So let's start with something let's start with something simple. Your honor. Oh, okay. Well, I guess it's not going to let me do it there even though that literally is a contradiction. That he was stabbed in the back, and she's like, he was stabbed in the chest. That bothers me. Alright. So, I guess here? Yep, okay. Sure. I'm a little, that's a little bit irritating. Mr. Edgeworth. This little girl put all her heart into drawing that picture. And yet you would insist on denying its existence. Huh? Hey, I'm not that bad guy. All I'm saying is that as far as the prosecutor, as the prosecutor for that case, I wasn't handed such a picture. It may well be. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Behold. This is the evidence list for the SL9 incident. Please turn it over, Your Honor. Turn it over. Turn it... Ah, oh, what's this? 
Yes, what is that? Hey, that's it! That's the picture I drew! Indeed. Two men appear to be wrestling here. What's the meaning of this? What are you doing with that list? Me? Only the prosecutor in charge should have access to that list. Huh? These lists, they're... They're different from each other. What? It would appear, Mr. Edgeworth, that the evidence list you were handed two years ago was incomplete. These two lists fit together to form one. You can see the marks here where they were torn apart from each other. So you see, Mr. Edgeworth, it's quite obvious what happened. Two years ago, only half of the evidence in that case ever reached you. What? What? Oh, Edgeworth. Edgeworth's gonna get spicy. Order. Order! But Miss Sky, why did you draw your picture on the back of such an important list? Because that's what Detective Goodman handed me in the questioning room, Your Honor. Wait a minute. If this list was torn in half, then that means... Your Honor! Are you alright, Mr. Wright? Your eyes are bulging from your head. If the evidence list was torn in half, then there might have been more of the drawing on the back of Mr. Edgeworth's list. Yes, that's quite conceivable, Mr. Edgeworth. It's possible. Let's see. Is something wrong? Do you even have to ask? Oh, jeez. Sorry, Your Honor. There is indeed something drawn on the back of my list. It's that... That... Thing. What? That's that... That thing! That thing that was dancing in the evidence room. Clearly, this act of vandalism is the work of a certain chief of detectives. I guess he was out of scrap paper. Evidence list restored and updated in the court record. I want to see it. Hold on. I want to see it. I don't know that... I don't know that that was... Hmm. I don't think that that is... Okay, I'm not going to do too many of these because it's going to slow everything down, but I'm just going to say that that is not the mascot. That's the vase. That is what that is. That is the vase. It is the silhouette of the vase. Very well. Witness. Will you please testify about this picture you drew two years ago? Dot, dot, dot. Huh? Oh, y yes, your sir, your honor. What's wrong with Emma? She seemed to be thinking about something when she was looking at the picture. Emma's picture! This is the picture I drew two years ago. The flash of lightning was so bright all I could see were shadows. After that, I must have fainted. This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. So you didn't see the stab. To think a flash of lightning could burn such an image into your mind. Thanks to that, though, she was able to show us exactly what she saw. Well, I don't see any contradictions here. This clearly shows Joe Dark about to murder Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Dot, dot, dot. No, it doesn't. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. It does not show that. Okay. This is the picture I drew two years ago. Did you draw this picture right after the incident? Um, I think I drew it two or three days later. 
At first, I was in such a state of shock that I couldn't do anything. During that time, the investigation team was reorganized. Oh, out of caffeine again. Detective Goodman was placed in charge under the direction of Damon Gant and Lana Skye. Two or three days later. A memory should still have been fresh in her mind. Excuse me, witness. But can you please tell us why this picture is painted all black? The flash of lightning was so bright all I could see were shadows. So at the time, you didn't even know it was Mr. Marshall who had come to your rescue? No, I couldn't see him clearly. The lightning was so bright, and I was knocked to the floor. You were knocked to the floor? Drake, Dark had a tight grip on me, but when Mr. Marshall jumped on him... I was knocked away. I turned around. And that's when the lightning flashed. Poor Emma. I'm just glad she wasn't hurt. What happened after the lightning flashed? After that, I must have fainted. You mean, you didn't see the actual murder take place? No. Uh, I'm sorry. The flash of lightning only dove off the darkness for a split second. Not only that, but the trauma of the situation understandably caused the witness to faint. Do you really need to torture this girl any further? What? Hey, I'm not the bad guy here. Anyway, this picture... This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. Sorry for asking so many times, but are you sure you drew exactly what you saw? Of course! This is the exact scene! Wasn't influenced in any way from your talks with the detectives. Are you insinuating we somehow manipulated her memory, Mr. Wright? No, no. Of course not. I'd better watch out, or he might find some way to cut my salary. I drew this picture before I heard anything from the detectives. So I don't think anyone's story would have influenced me. Mr. Wright, is there something that's bothering you about this picture? Huh? Oh, well... Yes. That's strange. She claims this is exactly the scene that was imprinted in her mind. And yet... There's clearly a contradiction here. Alright, so there's clearly a contradiction here. Is this where we're like, he was stabbed in the back? Is this where we're like, he was stabbed in the back? Maybe? Yes. Yes, it is. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this picture the witness drew contains a blatant contradiction. What? But I still remember it like it was yesterday. Mr. Wright. Perhaps it would be faster if you simply pointed out this contradiction for us? What part of this picture con contradicts the autopsy report? Uh, it's the fact that he's facing forward. I mean... I can't save right here. It's okay. It's the fact that he's facing forward, I would think. Um, I think it's this part here? Uh, I don't see what's so strange about that. That's because the drawing stinks. <laughs> Mr. Wright, how could you? The act of making an innocent girl cry should warrant the death penalty. I guess he means I shouldn't shift the blame to others. Hold on, we're gonna... Quick. Quickly! Before we use up all, we use up all of our, uh, before we use up all of our, um, our attempts. We're not, we're not backtracking in this. Oh, the defense has learned a lesson. Another look at the autopsy report and the picture. Alright, so the autopsy report. Stabbed in the back, died for a punctured heart and lung. Yeah. I mean, so I guess that's not it? I, 
I don't know. Because that's it. Like, he's... He was stabbed in the back. So that's the problem. Hmm. Nope. Okay. It's okay. Once I figure out what it is, I might reset it to keep my attempts back because I... Uh... Uh, this. Maybe. Oh, the contradiction, of course, lies here. I found it. And I looked, and I looked at that part, too. Take a look at the knife the man is holding. If you look closely, you can see its tip is broken. Even if I don't have to look, even I don't have to look closely to see that, Mr. Wright. But Mr. Wright, look at the evidence. See the murder weapon? Its tip is broken, too. If I recall... The tip of the knife was found broken off in the victim's body. It was the conclusive piece of evidence that proved Joe Dark was the murderer. I'm afraid it's not so simple, Emma. Objection. And where, pray tell, could you possibly see a problem? It's obvious, really. The victim suffered a single stab wound to the back. If the victim was only stabbed once then the murder weapon should not yet be broken. Ah! What's the meaning of this? Perhaps the knife was broken beforehand. Sorry, but I'm afraid that's not possible. The tip of the knife was found inside the victim's body. If it was broken beforehand, it couldn't possibly wind up there. That's right. But what does this mean? The tip of the knife was undeniably discovered within the victim's body. The only possible explanation is the witness's memory is mistaken. That's why I asked her so many times if she was sure she remembered correctly. I believe you were annoyed at the time. But she was sure she remembered correctly. But there's no other way to explain this inconsistency. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. There is an ex another explanation. Have you forgotten already? About a little something called falsified evidence? You're treading on thin ice, right? All I'm saying is that this broken knife tip might be the piece of evidence that was forged. You can't deny the possibility. No. Ugh! Order, order, order! Are you saying the investigation really was corrupted? Your Honor, please allow me to once again go over the events that took place the day of the murder. The police department and the prosecutor's office were holding a ceremony that day. After receiving the King of Prosecutors Award at the ceremony... Oh! That's why... That's why there's no halberd. When she was looking at what the stab, the weapon that she saw, is the halberd from the trophy. After receiving the King of Prosecutors Award at the ceremony, Neil Marshall questioned Joe Dark along with Damon Gant. During his questioning, Joe Dark fled, fled the room. Prosecutor Marshall chased after him and was killed by Dark. It is my belief that somewhere in this story, there is a lie. Hmm. I... I'm not lying. The man really was holding up a broken knife. I mean, I know she wasn't lying, and I know why there's a broken knife. If that's true, then there's no other way around it. This could not have been the actual murder weapon. There must have been another broken knife. What are the chances of there being two broken knives? Another broken knife besides Joe Dark's. Could there have been one? There is another one! If the witness is this adamant about the accuracy of what she saw, it can't just be explained away by a simple observational error. Mr. Wright. In that instant, Emma really did see a broken knife. 
I assume then that you have some information about this other broken knife. If so, please feel free to enlighten us. The murder weapon was already broken prior to the murder. There's only one way. Take a look at this. Here's the real murder weapon. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Man, I hate the fact that I only have two attempts for any of this right now. I hate that. If anything's broken here, it's you. Huh? I'm sure this all may be very amusing to you, Mr. Wright, but may I remind you that the fate of Miss Lala Sky hangs in the balance? No, that's it! Oh. Again, with this game and making me feel like I don't know what I'm doing when I know exactly what I'm doing. Uh, here's the real murder weapon. Okay. Maybe it was this. With the blood. But it didn't say... He got stabbed. Stabbed. Uh. Telling you... Ah, uh, whatever. Yep, yeah, nope. I, I, it's, it's wrong. Okay, whatever. We'll just reload. Because we know what the answer is for that other part. And we can just skip through that. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, you know what? It's the picture with... It's the picture, um... It's the picture that has the story... It has the, the halberd on the shield. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. We lose. Everybody knows it. Whatever. Look. It's been a really long day. So... All right. I'm gonna just do this. Da 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 da. da. I love how they go back and forth. They're like, objection, 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 objection. It's so good. I love it. It's that picture. That's the evidence. Okay. Oh, look, we're back. Yay. The answer lies in the past. Two years in the past. Right here inside this picture. This is a picture of the awards ceremony. Oh! What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? It's the... The broken murder weapon! Notice the award Prosecutor Marshall is holding. That's a broken knife. As we earlier concluded, the knife in the drawing was not Joe Dark's knife. That being the case, the knife the witness saw was in all likelihood from this award. Order, order, order! Neil Marshall was awarded King of Prosecutors that day. As an award, he was given this broken shield and knife. When he chased after Joe, Dr Joe Dark, he pulled out this knife. Being a prosecutor, he did not carry a pistol. This broken knife was the only weapon he had in this dangerous situation. <laughs> that... That can't be. Oh? And why not, Mr. Edgeworth? Because if the King of Prosecutors' award knife was the murder weapon, then the murderer and the victim would be reversed. What do you mean? I mean, this man raising a knife would have would have been Prosecutor Neil Marshall. 
Oh. Oh! I mean, it was. But the prosecutor was the one who actually died. That's true. What's going on here? It seems Mr. Wright has been a bit too eager to jump to conclusions. Hold it! Wait! I... I remember now. I remember everything. Witness? Mr. Edgeworth! What is it? Could you show me your evidence list again, please? His list? The one with that picture scribbled on the back? I knew it. This picture. I'm the one who drew it. What? You drew that. That's right. The list wasn't torn in half at the time I drew this picture. All this time I've been trying so hard to forget. I must have locked this part away deep inside me. Perhaps it would be best if we added this to the witness's testimony. Would you please tell us what you've recalled, Miss Skye? Yes, Your Honor. First the knife mix-up, and now the blue badger? This should be interesting. Emma's recollection! Uh, recollection. When I saw that man raise his knife, I panicked and I rushed toward the both of them. I think I, I, think I knocked away the man with the knife. Just then there was another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw the blue badger. He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw his shadow. It was the base. This is certainly most unusual. Try impossible. The chief of detectives hadn't even designed him until this year. That would mean he didn't even exist two years ago. Yes, well, the defense may now begin its cross-examination. Stop! Please, don't pursue this any further! Lana, what's the meaning of this? Please remain seated in the defendant's chair. But you can't do this! I've already, convinced to I've already confessed to the crime! Why can't you just leave it at that? Chief Prosecutor Skye. We've already come this far. It's too late to turn back. Silence! The defense will now begin its cross-examination. Bailiff, please detain the defendant. Seems we're finally getting to the core of the matter. Alright, let's do some press. When you say that man, I assume you refer to Joe Dark? Yes, at least I think it was him. You think? All I could really see were shadows. The power outage that immediately preceded the incident is also documented in the prosecutor's office reports. So then you... I panicked and rushed toward the both of them. Why would you do something so dangerous? What else could I have done? He was about to stab Mr. Marshall. She seems convinced that Dark was the one holding the knife. But as we've just theorized, Mr. Marshall was the one holding the knife. Well, I didn't know that at the time. When that dark guy knocked me down, all I could think of was, I've got to help that other person. I think I, I knocked away the man with the knife. What do you mean, you think? It, it all happened so fast, and I was in shock. I don't remember everything clearly. What I did, it's all kind of a blur. Miss Guy was almost killed before she was witness to a murder about to take place. With so much happening in a matter of seconds, a little disorientation is only natural. I saw the man about to stab the other person, who I thought was Mr. Marshall. I knew I had to stop the man with the knife. What you did was very brave, young girl. So then, what happened next? Just then, there was another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw the blue badger. Are you sure about this? Uh, of course. See? I even drew a picture of him here. But... It was the chief of detectives who thought of this hideous beast. And that was just this year. 
the blue badger didn't exist two years ago. This is all quite verifiable. I know it sounds strange. I was surprised too when I saw him at the police department. I had this nagging feeling that I'd seen him before somewhere. Now I finally remember. Oh, brother. Just when you thought that this thing had caused enough commotion. Tell us, where in the room did you see him dancing? He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw his shadow. His shadow? So you mean you didn't actually see his face? With its winning smile and all? That's right, but I still remember it. He had three creepy horns. This is pointless. That thing couldn't have possibly existed two years ago. The witness must be mistaken. That may well be. But what's important is what caused her to think she saw what she did. Oh? And I suppose you have an explanation. If so, then by all means, please tell us what this shadow really was. What was it Emma saw when that lightning flashed? Who is this blue badger really? I just might know! The blue badger hadn't even been dreamt up when Emma drew this picture. Yet she's certain she saw its shadow. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the defense's belief that on that fateful day two years ago, there indeed was something that looked similar to the Blue Badger. Something that is now sitting in this very room. Mr. Wright! In this room. Very well, Mr. Wright. What is it that the witness saw in that instant? We're gonna save again. Because... We're gonna save again. Like, we're... I'm not restarting. <laughs> Can't with the restarts. I played the whole game without saving during trials. Y'all can forgive me. <laughs> Please show us this mysterious blue badger look-alike. La 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 da 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 The mysterious blue badger was, in fact, this. But that's... Er, what exactly is that? I believe it's some sort of jar. But, Mr. Wright, that doesn't look anything like the Blue Badger. Indeed, it doesn't. As it stands now, it's just a plain jar. However, what if we were to change our viewpoint? Our viewpoint? Gotta show them the correct angle to look at this from. Rotate the jar. Rotate left, rotate right. No, we definitely want it to be... I definitely want it to be upside down. Is it right? Objection. Allow me to remind the defense its case hinges on the witness's drawing. If Mr. Wright can't match the shape the witness drew, we cannot accept his claim. Okay, gotta find just the right angle. It was close. Yeah, okay. So, where we were at, we, I'll go back to where we were. So this is where we were. Definitely not with that down. It has to be with it up. Maybe? Nope. Okay. Find just the right angle. Rotated it vertically a bit more. Hmm. Hmm. 
I feel like it has to be from this perspective. On its side. Maybe on its side. Uh huh. No. I refuse to give up. Like, this is not, it's not even an option to give up. <laughs> Look, I, I am so invested. I have been streaming for so long today, which is dumb. And it was a bad decision. And I don't care because I, just, I can't give up. Um... hear this music in my nightmares all night long. I'll tell you what. Ugh. No. That time of the night when everybody can see me just failing at a puzzle. You know, let me just point out that there were shadow puzzles in Genshin and I did them in five minutes. The entire everything for the event, I did five minutes. And this one, I'm just staring at it like my brain has fallen out of the side of my head. Mmm. My brain is stuck. What angle makes the handles arc down? Broken handle on the left. Oh, that's right. That is a handle that's broken. The angle that makes them arc down is the t is this one. This is the angle that makes them arc down. If the broken handle is on the left, is if we put them like this then they don't really look like his things you know but if we put it like this 
they gotta do? But I tried this and it didn't work. And maybe that was because part of it is broken? the shit in my nightmares, I swear. Alright. Well, and that's that's what it is. You have to get it exactly the right angle. The bottom is definitely the middle one. The, I don't even understand what that means. The bottom is the middle one. And the bottom is the middle one. Like, yeah. I don't think that that's... I mean, that kinda? Sort of? It's not enough. Like, it's too wide. The bottom is too wide. Maybe like that with it pointing away from you instead of towards you. Maybe. Hold on. Yep. Thank you. Well, is this a miracle or what? <sighs> no one can possibly deny this jar's resemblance to the blue badger. No. It can't be! Order, order! The defense has proven its claim. The mysterious blue badger witnessed on the day of the crime was actually this. Although we all enjoyed Mr. Wright's dramatic performance, one question remains. What's your point? What do you mean? So that badger thing was actually just a jar. It hasn't changed anything. I'm afraid that's where you're wrong, Mr. Edgeworth. You see... You see, this changes everything. Indeed. Very well, then. Please tell us. What's different now that we know the witness saw this jar? Um, I think the murder weapon, maybe. This changes everything! <laughs> oh, murder weapon? Murder weapon? Feels like it's the murder weapon? Doesn't change the murder weapon. Because it's it doesn't change the murder weapon. It's still a stab. Um, you change the murderer, maybe. Location. Um. Sure. Allow me to take these in turn. At the moment of the murder, the witness saw this jar. At a very specific angle, I might add, Mr. Wright. Yes, well, knowing this, where could she have seen this jar? Where? The location of the jar is shown in a picture taken on the day of the crime. It's on a shelf in the office of Damon Gant. But the body was found lying near Lana Skye's desk. The witness testified so herself. Yes! And it is these two facts that reveal what actually transpired. You see, the struggle between Dark and Marshall did not take place in Lana Sky's office. It happened on the other side of the room, in Chief Gant's office. Are you implying the murderer moved the victim's body? From Damon Gant's office to Lana Sky's office? Yes. Why would he do that? There's no reason. Exactly. If there wasn't a reason, 
he wouldn't have gone through the trouble. The only logical conclusion is that there was a reason. Do you know what that reason was, Mr. Wright? Do we know? I don't know. Let me get a quick say. Ba 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 ba. <sighs> Finally figured it out. So this is why Lana tried to stop the trial. It's too late to quit now, though. Please recall the witness's testimony. She said she knocked away the man who was holding up the knife. In the next instant, the jar was hit and flew through the air. Now tell me, what could have sent the jar flying? That would have to have been the impact the man made when he was knocked into the wall. Ladies and gentlemen, if I may draw your attention to this picture once more. If the man was knocked in the direction of the shelf the jar was sitting on, what would he have hit? Ah! Uh, uh, the suit of armor, holding a very sharp and dangerous looking sword. It was an accident. That is why Lana's been trying to stop everything. Because Emma hit him, he fell into the armor, the armor killed him, and it was her fault. Murder tends to be a reason. Yes. And since the man who was knocked into the armor was carrying a broken knife, he would had to have been Neil Marshall, wielding the King of Prosecutors trophy. No. Mr. Wright, you can't be thinking. Yes. There is another possibility of what actually transpired in that room. Another possibility. Of course, the perpetrator would have had no idea, but nevertheless... I... I don't know if I can go through with this. Mr. Wright? What's the matter? If events took place as the defense theorizes, then the outcome is obvious. In that moment, assuming the man Emma Sky knocked away was actually Prosecutor Neil Marshall... Poor Emma. Poor Emma. You mean... Mr. Marshall died... because of... me? No! Aww. And she fainted. I never imagined her testimony would lead to this. So it was the witness who took the victim's life, and then proved so with her own testimony. This is unprecedented. We're not done yet! What? What are you saying? I'm sorry, Miss Sky, but given the circumstances... Joe Dark murdered Prosecutor Marshall! How can you think it was Emma? How dare you try to pin the crime on her? Imagine that coming from you. If you recall, it was you who admitted to forging evidence two years ago. The reason you moved to prosecute the reason you moved Prosecutor Marshall's body was to keep anyone else from finding out about what Emma did, wasn't it? I assure you, Mr. Edgeworth, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you hope to have anyone believe your insane allegations, I'm afraid you're going to have to have proof. Tell me, do you have any conclusive evidence that proves my sister killed Neil Marshall? E evidence? I'm willing to bet you don't. Yes, it certainly would be difficult to prove this with evidence. If we don't have evidence, then we'll have to rely on testimony. I'm afraid that won't work in this case. Both parties involved in the incident are dead. We certainly can't get dead people to testify. This has all been a wild goose chase from the beginning. Humph. <laughs> Touché, Miss Guy. Of course, that only leads us with one possibility. You mean there's still another possibility? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? 
I mean, the possibility that the victim has left us a message. For better or for worse, Mr. Marshall did not die instantly. He may have left behind the name of the person who took his life, in one manner or another. That's... that's impossible! Well, Mr. Wright, this is the only possibility left to you. A message from the deceased. Does such a message exist? I've got to think back to the court record. The real murderer's name that the victim may have left behind is in the evidence. This message from the deceased is already in our possession. Mr. Wright, will you stop at nothing to prove my sister a murderer? Do not be mistaken, Miss Skye. Our purpose is not to accuse Emma of any crime. There is only one thing we seek. The truth. No matter how painful it may be. Because the statute of limitations is up on that, that case. Even if we prove that Emma did it by accident, they can't prosecute her because the statute of limitations has expired. Now then, Mr. Wright. Please show us the piece of evidence that conveys a message from the deceased. No, 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 no. Let me save. Let me save. Son of a bitch. Okay. Um, I think it's the, because there's a line. There's a line on this vase. I think it's the vase. It's within the 15 years that they took the evidence to the police. They said that it was two years. And then after that, the it gets buried and they can't reopen it. And that was two days ago on the day of the murder. That expired. Piece of cloth with Emma Sky's prints. I think that this is actually a piece of cloth from um, his jacket. I don't want to screw this up. I don't have that many things. I don't want to screw this up. This is the message left by the deceased. I went with the jar. This is that blue badger from before, right? Oh, is he going to just speak the killer's name? If that thing could, I'm sure it would. It's like everyone's forgotten. This is just a jar. A message was left here on the surface of this jar. What do you mean? If you look closely, you can see a faint trail of blood on this jar. It looks like someone wiped the blood away. Yes, but notice. For some reason, the blood on some of the fragments was not wiped away. Yes, there is a line here, drawn in blood. So what you're saying is... Is these dots were once lines. Prosecutor Marshall did not die instantly. He used the few precious moments left to him to leave behind a message. One that someone apparently wiped away. But blood must have seeped into the jar where the lines changed direction. Precisely so. All we need to do is connect these points. And the victim's message will become apparent. <laughs> no! All we have to do is spray luminol on it. Mr. Wright, what kind of message did the victim leave for us? Your Honor, I believe these bloodstains will reveal to us the answer. Connect these dots to make letters. It's only one thing the victim would have written given the circumstances. His murderer's name. Sorry, Emma. Not great. Don't like it. Not a fan. See if there's any I missed through here. Okay. Uh, yep, I think that's it. Looks like Emma to me. It's a defense attorney's duty to prove their client's innocence. That's why all I've been thinking about is saving Lana. After all my efforts, I never thought it would turn out like this. 
I mean, Gant's a piece of shit, but... Emma. So this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind. Of all people. She may not have meant it, but in the end, the one who took the victim's life was Emma Skye. See, Worthy? Can't say I didn't warn you. Chief Gant. Do you understand the implications of what you've done? What? What are you talking about? Two years ago, Joe Dark was sentenced to death. He was convicted because of his final murder. I believe you were the prosecutor in the case, were you not? Ugh. Yes, Worthy. Because of you, an innocent man was sentenced to death. Not only that, but you used forged evidence to ensure his conviction. Ugh. But Joe Dark really was a serial murder. murderer. That's undeniable. I'm afraid that's not important. Didn't you know? We aren't defenders of justice. What? We're merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death is no light matter. Even if there wasn't any cover-up or evidence forgery. Ultimately, the responsibility falls on the prosecutor in charge. Despite what anyone may say, this fact cannot be denied. What's going on at the prosecutor's office? They may have seen an innocent man to death. How can he just stand there like it wasn't his fault? Order! Order! Judge is like, fuck you. The gavel's pounding fell on deaf ears. Unable to settle the crowd, the judge declared a recess. Where this trial is headed, no one knows. Oh my god. It's never gonna end! It's okay. It's alright. Alright, look. Y'all. Look. I'm saving. I'm taking a five minute break. We're coming back, and I'm finishing this. This is it. I'm done with this. Ugh! Oh! The game that never ends, right? Okay. 12.06, defendant lobby number two. Right. I'm taking a break. I'll be back. I'll be back in five minutes. I'll be back. <laughs>